Here's a guide from absolute beginner to complete pro in Hearthstone Battlegrounds. So whether you're just getting started with the game and don't know where to begin, or you've been playing since the start, hopefully there's some tips in this video that will help you improve and become a better player. Now there's no camera recording here because I'm a little bit sick, so instead in the background you will see a very nice crack game that I played on stream yesterday. There's three steps here. Step one is getting started. So how do you start learning? I think that's a very important question to ask. How do you actually learn a game like Battlegrounds? The first thing is just getting familiar with all the cards and the heroes. There are so many cards and heroes and it can get really overwhelming to try and memorize everything. So just play a lot and eventually you will know what each card does just by looking at it instead of having to hover over all of them and read their abilities. So this is just getting familiar with the game and all of the core important cards and heroes that you encounter a lot. Once you know what the cards and heroes do, it's economy. This is one of the most important aspects that are really important to master early on because well, they're important throughout the entire game and are probably the biggest difference maker between people being like highly ranked and people being top of the leaderboard. Economy meaning how you spend your gold. So early game you want to roll less, you want to know the leveling curves. And I'm going to leave resources in the description. For leveling curves you can check out spreadsheets and websites which I'll leave below or one of my videos breaking down the most common ones right now. Basically with economy you just want to know how to spend your gold properly every turn without wasting any of it. Another very important part is scaling. Scaling is basically what the game is all about. Without scaling, you don't have an endgame comp and you won't be able to compete with everyone else. It's just about knowing how the end games work. Like, how do you progress your board into an end game? So know all of the important cards to look for. I also have a guide on all of the important direction that we had in the game. By now, there's a couple more pieces of direction and scaling that they have added. These are probably the most important cards to memorize and know about because they, once you hit them, could lead to an actual end game. So, master all of the scaling, know how the tribes work, and then last but not least for step one, one. there's the must knows and these are things that you just need to know about the game and this means terminology which you know i also made an entire video about all of the important things like tempo apm tokens what all of it means and how it can be an advantage to you other must knowns are things you just encounter while playing a lot so that was step one just getting started all of the basics and these are the things that you basically you know once you are first loading hearts and battlegrounds gotta get a grasp of if you want to try and push towards decent ranks now step two is progress I feel like the majority that watches my videos is in this bucket because this is where you understand the fundamentals of the game, everything I just talked about, but you're trying to push towards, you know, a higher rating. First, there are many strategies and interactions that you can know. There is so many different ways that cards interact with each other, so many strategies that constantly change in the game because of the meta or cards changing or new heroes being introduced. And most of these strategies and interactions you learn from watching other streamers, videos or guides. I personally still watch a lot of other streams because they sometimes use strategies that I haven't tried myself or didn't know about or watching gameplay videos or just reading about guides on Twitter. There's a lot of different ways that you can be informed about these but there's like no one set place to go. Some examples are the Domo Master combo so that is just a very classic elemental combo from tier 4 and 5. Nosdormu works really well with Felbat because with your buddy you can buff the shop so that's a very cool interaction to know about. Hitting a brand on tier 5 is amazing with Finley because with their buddy you can generate more buddies and Khadgar with tokens can get you more triples and more economy this is a very old strategy that is less relevant right now but still in the game and these are just some of the many things that you can encounter the second point for step two is meta tracking it is important to keep up to date with how the meta is going because at some point things become more tempo-ish more mid-rangey or more greedy and if you don't adapt you won't be able to well gain ranks. So the heroes that you pick and the card relevance changes constantly. Some heroes that were good in the past suck now and vice versa there's heroes that were horrible that suddenly are seeing an increase in win rate. Same with some cards being relevant. Sometimes on tier 1 this card is good, sometimes it's not. Sometimes Light Fang is good and sometimes it just sucks super hard. So you know about the meta just by playing a lot you can see things shifting or by again watching streamers or videos and keeping up to date with what they play and pick and how the lobbies play out. So if you are somewhat serious about the game, keeping track of how the meta evolves is kind of mandatory. And then last but not least, change. Like changing is super important if you just find something that works and stick with it. You're just, you know, your strategies or your gameplay style isn't gonna be good enough in a couple months from now. You gotta know how to unlearn things that you learned in the past to shift and to adapt into a new environment. Don't be scared to change. Like many times I felt like, okay, now I figured out this meta. I just play a temple like this, tier 4 mech comp. And then a month later, I just start losing all of my games and I don't know why. And it's because I don't adapt to the meta change, to the nerfs, to a new tribe 
type to there's so many things that constantly change in the game so be willing to learn new things and unlearn old things in order to keep up with how the game is going in the future now before we go on to step three a quick reminder that if you're new here and you're enjoying this video so far to you know subscribe to the channel if you want to catch more of this kind of battlegrounds content and leaving a like is also very much appreciated thank you and step three is mastery so how do you get to the top of the leaderboard this is not for everyone i know most people just want to play this game for fun and want to be you know highly ranked but top of leaderboard really requires some extra dedication the couple times that i pushed for top leaderboards i actually hit it were incredibly exhausting and a lot of things were learned from that first of all the grind is real like there is a lot of grinding involved and a lot of hours you gotta spend in the game and this is to minimize variance we all know there's rng in the game i'm not gonna hide it there are coin flips very often in your final fights but the more games you play the larger the sample size the less this will be relevant because your skill will come true the more time you put in the more grind the more you minimize the variants that are going to be put into your games and the more your skill is going to matter and even if you have a downswing every top player sometimes loses like hundreds of mmr in a couple hours you know you're better than that and some of it was out of your control so the next time you'll probably gain it back the amount of times you get unlucky is pretty much always equal to the amount of times you get lucky in the long run. That's how coin flips work. You only remember the bad coin flips, but the good coin flips are there as well. So just play a lot. The second point is to look at your own gameplay and notice your style. It's very impressive how even top leaderboard players like literally the rank one player on NA and rank one player on AU were insanely good and played the game completely different. People have styles and that is okay. Not everyone plays the game exactly the same. We're not robots and that is what makes us unique and how we are able to shine through. I actually don't know many top players that play the game exactly the same or even have the same tier list. Like even when you rate heroes, some people rate heroes better than others just because it fits their style. So notice what your style is and work on it. Try and fix the flaws in your style if you're good at tempo you might have to work on your greedy side a bit if you want to play in tournaments or if you want to you know close out some other more difficult lobbies now look at your own gameplay see what the mistakes are that you make and try to fix them like that's the benefit of streaming the game that you're playing you can always look back at it you even have chat back seating but the ability to look back on your game and revisit turns that you were unsure of to see all the different lines are actually huge so if you're very serious about this a very quick way to improve that not that many people do is just reviewing your own gameplay I I actually don't know that many top players that ever look back at their own gameplay just to see how they could improve. So this is of course not mandatory, but I think it speeds up the process. Like if you do this compared to not doing it, I think you'll make it a whole lot quicker and you will definitely see way clearer how you can improve. The third point is to play with others and learn from others. Like I mentioned, you have your own gameplay, you have your own ideas of how the game is played properly and how you can perform well. But watching other people play is still very interesting and there's so many lines that they might take that you don't even consider and that's why playing together with friends or with others around your same rank is just very beneficial because then you will start having discussions about different lines you will start going back and forth about why this is better or why this is better or you might get to pick a hero that you usually never play and then learn that hero because well your friend knows how to play it multiple minds together are always better than just one brain performing at max capacity so this is true in any field just try and learn from others and collaborate you're gonna be amazed by the results and then last but not least is getting involved in discussions more than ever now because of twitter being very relevant we see pros just posting games or posting strategies recently dummy another amazing player and streamer posted a very cool gilwing strategy and i hate gilwing i always sucked with the hero but i gave it a go and it felt so good it was a very easy second place almost first place this wouldn't have happened if i wasn't involved in what the community is saying and just the general discourse so be active in the community join discussions sometimes there's someone talking about a card that should be removed or nerfed and other people say it's fine and that other cards are the problem these are healthy discussions to have and will help you look at things in a different light and just make you a well-rounded player this can also happen in discords this can happen in stream chats in comment sections everywhere but it kind of falls in line with the point of step two where you gotta keep track of the meta another great way to keep track of how things are moving and shifting is through these discussions there's definitely way more tips that i could give here for any of these steps but i want to keep this video condensed and simple hopefully there's some very good actionable points in here that you can go out and do right now to see improvement within a couple of weeks. I say a couple of weeks because I can't just instantly give a tip that will make you jump to the 3000 MMR. This is just, you know, part of the practice. If you have your own tips, leave them down below. Thank you for watching and I will catch you in the next video.